Welcome everyone. It's good to see you. I'm so thankful you are here. Welcome, welcome. I'm Ken Arrington, co-founder of Awake to Dream. And today I'm going to share a vision of a powerful future with you. Ashley, let me reframe this. Today I'm inviting you to become part of a dynamic and foundational change, not just in a region, but all around the globe. And today we're friends, you and I. We're sitting at my kitchen table. It's nothing fancy with some artwork that a friend of ours made for us a long, long time ago. And we're just sitting here having a conversation. If you're looking for highfalutin graphics and high pressure sales pitches and things like that, that's not what we do. At Awake to Dream, we dream and we roll up our sleeves and we get to work. And I am inviting you to be a part of a vision. And our focus today is on our groundbreaking project in Puerto Rico, a very unique 64 acre farm that promises to be not just a beacon of hope for a community that's been ravaged by forced poverty, but is a, a catalyst for global transformation. And you have a powerful role to play. Imagine a place where every seed sown is a step towards sustainability. Every harvest of victory against both physical and spiritual hunger. And every retreat and workshop are lights that shine the way like a beacon on a hill. Because our project is not just a farm. In fact, it's not even a project. It's a body, mind, and spirit lifeline for the people of Puerto Rico, offering a path to self-sufficiency, empowerment, environmental restoration, and unshackled lives. But that doesn't just remain here in Puerto Rico. That is for people who are coming to visit and taking a piece of what they learn back with them. And we're here because this movement is not going to stop in Puerto Rico. This is a seed of revolution that will change uncountable destinies for generations. And we're here today to turn this vision into a reality. And we're looking for partnerships, for people who align with this vision, to lay the foundation for a revolution that will not only feed bodies, but nourish the spirit and unlock awakening. And together, we're going to create a legacy of resilience, redemption, renewal, and sustainable prosperity that we truly believe can reshape reality for those who need it most. And in so doing, shift the future for generations. And right now, before we begin, I want us to indulge together a little bit. I want you to close your eyes. Go ahead, close them. You can trust me. I'm not going to do anything, all right? <laughs> Just close your eyes. I want you to dream with me for a little bit. I'm going to keep you safe. I promise not to lose you along the way. But I am asking for your trust because I want to show you something amazing. Now, I know that you might be a little curious. You might want to close your eyes. You might want to keep your eyes open and see what's going on. And if you do that, I've prepared a few slides. But I do encourage you to keep your eyes closed. So let's just take a deep breath together. In five, four, three, two, one. With your eyes closed and your mind's eye open, I want you to envision yourself as a feather caught up in high, wispy clouds. You're safe. You're drifting at peace in the air. You're in control. You're not falling. You're merely floating. And in your mind's eye, as we're floating as a feather together, we're drifting high above an island, a rectangle of radiant green terrain surrounded by blue ocean, where the cool winds of the water breathe across the landscape shifting the countless trees of the mountains, the hills, the rainforests, and valleys. 
and from high in the clouds as we drift slowly down, slowly, slowly down. We can see that there is a sacred dance to the land as the winds and the breezes swirl. And make no mistake, it's breathtaking seeing how the mountains and valleys have worked for thousands of years in harmony, giving birth to beautiful beaches that line the island with a delicate tightrope of sand. Drifting lower, you can see the blue-green lines of rivers as they meander down and carve their way down the landscape to the ocean. And as the wind pulls us along, you can see that along the north and east coasts of the island, there's crashing waves and packed beaches. And with those crowded beaches are the unmistakable outlines of towering buildings and resorts. You can see the swell of development, small towns and cities hugging the sides of the island like they're holding on for dear life. And in the resorts, for those in the resorts, it's like paradise swimming out into warm waters, frolicking on the beach, smiles on faces. They've come to the island as an escape from their nine to five lives. But as the wind catches us up again and pushes us away from the resorts, we see a different reality of this island. We see the truth that not many from the mainland see. As we drift over the cities and the rural areas, you see buildings with broken roofs, yards filled with debris, broken pockmarked roads. Looking closer, the homes that were so beautiful from high above, as you get closer, you see the bars on the windows and the doors, the cracked foundations and the weak support. You see broken lives. You see struggle. You see the elderly, the impoverished, the neglected, men and women and children at risk, wondering how they're gonna afford not just clothing and shelter, but food and clean water. You see the smokestacks of empty factories being reclaimed with the vines and foliage of the rainforest, leaching chemicals into the ground. You see refineries releasing waste into the rivers. You see the streams that looked so pure from high above, but upon closer inspection, you see they're choked with ancient pesticides from over farm lands that now lie fallow. The nutrition of its soil depleted from over 130 years of imported commercial cash crops not native to the land. And you realize that behind the photos of paradise that you've seen from those visiting from the outside, from the inside, the picture's quite different. You feel the hopelessness, the cost of natural disasters, hurricanes, earthquakes. And with that, economic futility, falling upon the people that have called this island home for generations. You feel the despair rising from the ones struggling to survive in this land, those who live in the shadow of forgotten promises and abused potential. But don't despair. This dream's not going to be a nightmare. Because amidst this stark reality, there are glimmers of light, rising as beacons of hope. For people are rising up with a dream in their heart to see a transformed land. And in the southwest corner of this resilient island, this place, the rich port, Puerto Rico, a beautiful light is shimmering into existence beckoning you to its shine. Imagine now as the feather of your imagination drifts gently down. You find yourself landing softly on a lush mountaintop on a patch of fertile soil, rich with promise and possibility. Here amidst the struggles and the scars, A community gathers with a shared dream to turn this broken corner of paradise into a thriving oasis of growth, learning, and prosperity. A place where heaven and earth meet, where hope thrives and destinies are realized and redeemed. You see hope brightening the eyes 
and dreams sprouting from the minds of those this community serves. You see, joy <laughs> of the hearts that we serve. Now I want you to open your eyes. Welcome back. Now I know you probably had your eyes open for a little bit of that. I saw you peeking. But I want you to let the vision linger. This piece of lush farmland dripping with thick vegetation yielding up abundance from the soil. A vision of hands joined in unity and hearts beating with determination and minds fueled and brimming with passion and innovation. Because this is our chance together to partner with and to radically steward and reshape a region in crisis and to help write a new chapter in this land's story. This is a journey that today we're inviting you to join, a journey where every seed planted is a symbol of resilience, where every partnership forged is a testament to hope, and where every dream nurtured becomes reality. Welcome to the awakening of a community, the revival of spirit, and the birth of a legacy because that is who we are at Awake to Dream Incorporated. My name's Ken Arrington, and I'm the director of Awake to Dream Incorporated, a U.S. and Puerto Rico-based charity and nonprofit whose mission is to help people reawaken to who they really are and become who they were created to be, offering hope, transformation, inspiration, and innovation. And in Puerto Rico, one of the ways we are doing this is by establishing a self-sustained, eco-friendly community farm aimed at alleviating food insecurity, providing disaster relief, and empowering the local community through education, sustainable agriculture, and intentional living practices, all offered free of charge to those in need. And while that all sounds good and official, and it is our mission statement as recognized in our Constitution and bylaws, what we're doing in Puerto Rico and what we're inviting you to is way way more so much more as you're going to find out over the next 25 minutes and in the q a but before going further i'd like to introduce you to a few folks first and foremost is my wife and partner jennifer errington she's absolutely amazing she is my partner my equal by my side in every way she's an incredible recording artist and transformational specialist and her heart pastorally is unlike anything I've ever met. Additionally, I'd like to introduce you to two of our trustees. The first is Sue Pottinger. Uh, she's with us today. And Jacob Tippett as well. These are two of our trustees, the guidance for this project. And part of our core team already here on the ground in Puerto Rico is Zane and Heather Schott. Now, many of you know my wife and I, or you know us through our outreaches, our ministries, and online content. You may know me from my books as a content creator, or Jennifer from her music. Or you might know us from our UK-based charity that I founded and directed, The Gathering Place, which since 2019 has assisted thousands of people in need, creating a community that addresses the needs of the abused, the neglected, and the at risk, creating a safe place, offering clothing, coats, toiletries, counseling, a place to stay warm, computer lab, a play area for kids, exercise classes, art and sound therapy, homeschool and after school tutorials, addiction help and addiction recovery, you name it, all provided to the public at no cost, regardless of race, gender, faith, disability, doesn't matter. The Gathering Place is a place where dreams come alive. It's a community resource where volunteers are given all the power. We're not program driven. We're driven by the passion of our volunteers. No one's paid a salary. There's no payroll. Instead, we find what burns in a person's heart, the seed that they have deep inside, and we merely water it. We resource it and provide it room to grow. And all the income that comes in is viewed as a seed to be stewarded to bring about more fruit. And pay attention to that because that's going to come up later. Because what we do is not about projects. It's about people. 
fueled by passion, becoming who they are, all in service to their fellow man. My wife and I and our four children, we've given away everything we own multiple times, relocating continents twice. Not towns, not cities, not states, not countries. Continents. Twice. Living this out. Helping others discover this in themselves to build the dreams that that have lain on our collective hearts. We're passionate to see reality shift and for people to have the opportunity to become who they were created to be, free from shame, trauma, and judgment. And when given a vision, our family, we're together, all or nothing, diving into the deep end with no plan B and no backup option. I've been all over the world, teaching others, learning from others, leading others, and always believing that at their core, people want to see real change on this earth. And I believe, I truly, truly believe in my heart of hearts that when enough people realize who they are and how beautiful, special, and unique they are, we can make this earth look like heaven. And in 2021, I had a vision of a very unique farm in the mountains of a tropical island. Now, it might sound crazy to you, but this was an actual vision. And you might not believe in visions and dreams, and that's okay if you don't, but we do. We base our lives on them. And just the same as when I began having visions in October 2017 of a shop front in Wales, UK, that was dedicated to helping the public and providing resources and counseling and hope to the lost and hurting all for free. Another vision came to me on May 1st, 2021, as I was walking my kids to a nearby playground. At that point, our family had been in the UK for almost three years and our charity was humming along, but I was wondering what our next steps with. I was praying about our next steps because we knew the UK wasn't our end stop. We just knew that. And at that moment on cue, I had a powerful vision of a lush green farm. And this vision, oh God, it took my breath away in its complexity. As a guy that was only familiar with home gardening, what I saw in the vision was farming unlike anything I knew. The terrain wasn't the standard farm fields that I was used to seeing growing up in North Carolina. The land in this vision was hot, it was humid, with thick rain and soil, and I knew that this vision was set in the tropics. There were were fields in this vision, but they were different. They were filled with vertical growth, and each about an acre, an acre and a half. But there was also what I can only explain as acres upon acres upon acres uh, sweeping down this, this mountainside with vegetation sweeping up terraces and hillsides with thick verdant fruit just, just growing like huge on the vine. And tropical flowers, they bloomed along the ridges of the hills and, and, and sunflowers, uh, fields of sunflowers were everywhere. And thousands of shimmering fish swam in these tubs. And remember, we're on an island. It was just so unique that these huge aquaponic tubs with tubing running out of these large vats. And I knew that it was providing the surrounding acreage with the water from the tubs. And it was, you know, like a powerful fertilizer. It was like a a self-contained system enabling multiple yields and melons and gourds and root vegetables were in great supply, just literally pouring out the tops of raised beds and just blossoming acres and acres and acres of varied terrain and varied topography, but everything just yielding this abundant, massive amount of food and massive groves of fruit, coffee and cacao, plantains and bananas. They danced along these trails surrounding the mountain while livestock with goats and chickens grazed nearby. Ah, it's beautiful. And a river ran around the property, supplying it with fresh water. And water pumped up from the river, providing most of the farm's needs. Additionally, I knew that this farm would be an exercise in sustainable initiatives, water and solar and more, being self-contained and able to withstand disaster. And in fact, I immediately knew this place would be a refuge from disaster providing resources to those in need and teaching others how to provide for themselves. And in many ways, 
it would be the difference between life and death for some in times of need. But I also knew that this farm would be a playground of sorts where new farming initiatives would thrive, offering opportunities for experimentation and trial and error, working with local universities and commercial enterprises to test organic and pesticide free alternatives, as well as working with roots and herbs and plants as medicine. That was huge. And I knew in the vision that everything raised would go back to a local community in the grip of poverty. That every bit of fruit, every vegetable, every bit of coffee and cacao, everything that the land produced would go to those in need within the community, providing nutritious, organic, and pesticide-free food for the hungry. Just like we did at the gathering place, everything that was raised on this farm would be given away to those in need and would be a resource to teach others how to do it themselves. I saw where communities and community leaders would come to receive from the land, where university students and professors would come and have unfettered access, where others would come and be fed and would in turn learn to feed others, but not just that, and if the vision wasn't detailed enough on the property, there was a large single-story house, but our family didn't live there. In fact, no one lived in that house full-time. The house was a place where people were hosted, people who were coming to work with the land, people who would travel from all around the world to offer help and healing, to lead classes and conferences and, and meetings and retreats, to partner and join with the vision, bringing a piece of their heart to this land for others in need. And there were courtyards, communal areas outside of this home that could welcome dozens of people all at once with the ability to operate as a community kitchen, helping to provide meals for others. The emphasis was around gathering together for a common good, everyone coming to contribute to the whole, a community designed to impact communities, bringing in people from around the world who had a heart for awakening, who had a heart for good and for releasing love and serving to others. People that realized that it wasn't enough to talk the talk, but it was about walking the walk. And down a small rise, there was a clearing with seven unique tiny homes, offering additional temporary housing for those who were traveling to this farm, a farm that was so much more than a farm, to work the land and share in the project for a week or weeks at a time. And while there, these people would also experience their own transformation through health and spiritual retreats and programs and by working with the public that the farm serves. The vision was so intense, so real, so visceral, I immediately stopped my walk. I started writing down the details of the vision in my journals, and, and, I, and I wrote everything down in detail. And, and during the q and I'll be happy to show that journal. But if you know me, and those that are watching that know me well, uh, you know that when something like this happens, when I get a hold of a vision, I'm a man possessed. And immediately I, I dove into discovering everything I could about tropical plant growth, building small, tiny home communities, how to even build a community like that. I studied earthship housing, A-frame housing, storage container housing. I began studying uh, compostable toilets, wastewater management, trash disposal, tiered community involvement. And I began to freak out because I... I soon realized this was beyond me. How could I, I mean, how could we do something like this? I mean, we had created a charity in Wales with a dozen or so volunteers and a regional outreach to NHS hospitals and nursing homes and town councils. That was one thing, but this, this, this was different. And to top it off, <laughs> I didn't even know where this farm was supposed to be. But when I closed my eyes, I could see it. And I want you to imagine it. I could hear the birds in the trees. I could feel the soil in my hands. I could see the way the morning mist wrapped around the mountain and mingled in the trees. And I could see the smiles of those we were coming to help, those who were going to bed with more than just a full belly, but were going to go to bed with hearts full of hope, wonder, and love. And after sharing the vision with my wife, oh, you know my wife. And we discussed what we felt we were being called to and 
Very quickly, I was connected with someone with intimate knowledge of us uh, uh, who had a similar blueprint for what we were doing. Someone who was already hosting 50 mission teams from the mainland a year, over 500 volunteers from the mainland a year, and feeding over 600 people a month, all on a small farm in North Puerto Rico. And after we talked on the phone, he immediately invited us to visit his operation. So we came and he showed us everything, opened up everything to us. He was so generous and so kind. And after the meeting, I was almost in tears because this vision just burned in my heart so deep. I couldn't see anything but it, but I was so scared. It's so big. It's beyond me, right? I, I, something this scale this massive, I didn't know how to run it. And, he just looked at me with this fatherly compassion and he smiled and he whispered, he said, I don't know how to do any of this either. I just bring together everyone who does and I stand back and I resource them and I allow them to do what they need to do. I just provide the passion, the space and the opportunity. And it changed everything because it dawned on me. This is what we do. This is who we are. That's what fire starters and pioneers do. We do the things that others say can't be done. But we listen to the heart of the land and we hear the song of the land's people and we say, yes, we're going to do whatever it takes. And on that trip, my wife, my wife and I, and I'm fully comfortable saying this, and I'm sorry if you aren't, but I am. We were divinely led to southwest Puerto Rico, hours away from where our friend was. And we were just touring around, but after visiting Mayuez, learning of the city and its people and its struggles, and more importantly, seeing the topography of the land that I had seen in the vision, we knew immediately this was divinely inspired. This is where the farm of my vision was supposed to be. Mayuez is the largest city in southwestern Puerto Rico with a population of 80,000. It's bordered on the west by beautiful ocean, to the north and east by mountains, and to the south by wide plains. But due to low-lying levels in the very active Punta Patalva fault line, Mayuez is especially vulnerable to natural disasters, earthquakes, hurricanes, and even tsunamis. And evidence of these disasters is everywhere in MIOS. Broken buildings, broken roads, broken families. This video was taken just a few days ago. And you can see the devastation from hurricanes and earthquakes from four, five, six, seven years ago, still remain. And I almost forgot to mention the beautiful ocean that surrounds Mayuez. There are three rivers that after they pass the refineries, the chemical pesticide plants, the pharmaceutical plants, the city, the waters are too polluted with the main culprit according to the EPA being in the pharmaceutical industry. And the beautiful ocean on this six mile part of the island has been declared not fit for human activity. Adding insult to injury, the economy of Mayaguez has been in a downturn status for over 16 years, with unemployment levels running between 16 and 20 percent and the average household income listed at $16,000 a year. It's not per person, by the way, it's per household. The average age in southwest Puerto Rico is 43 years old with a significant brain drain of youth moving out of country for better opportunity. And groceries here, they cost 25% more than on the mainland, topped with 11.5% sales tax, not including an additional 4% tax for professional services, which is higher than any U.S. state. You see what's going on here, what these people are facing, not just from an economic level, but from a a spiritual, a soul level. 
Due to antiquated shipping laws and taxation requirements, all incoming imports shipped by boat into Puerto Rico are required to come from U.S. ports and U.S. ships, driving up prices to insane levels. And yes, there are innumerable crops that can grow year-round in Puerto Rico. But to add insult to injury, most commercial goods raised on this island are not distributed to the people of Puerto Rico, but are instead shipped to the mainland by corporate interests, forcing Puerto Ricans to import over 80 five percent of their food from the United States and that's according to the USDA you want an avocado costs three dollars for a non-organic avocado here do you want a bag of lettuce it's ten dollars unless you want to buy the wilted stuff for six you want to splurge and cook with butter four sticks of butter is eight dollars and that's not the fancy Irish butter that's the land of lake stuff and utilities oh man don't even get me started electricity on here on the island is 250 percent higher than on the mainland due to its damaged and antiquated grid system and it collapses all the time so what does it mean it means poverty it means despair. It means loss of control of one's own destiny. It means the average person that lives here is just waiting for the next natural disaster or for the next shoe to drop. They can't look to the future because they're worrying about surviving today. And it's led to a collapse of self-worth and serious crises of faith. And it means the loss of one thing all of us need. Hope. And government support and so little yeah Puerto Rico is a US territory and many do receive government support but as Puerto Rico is not a state government support here is greatly reduced from what's on the mainland a family of four here is only eligible for about four hundred and ten dollars a month in benefits compared to seven hundred and seventeen dollars on the mainland and I'm gonna be real with you that doesn't go far for a family of four when a gallon of milk is seven bucks so you have an island country that's paying higher than U.S. mainland prices by up to 25% and subjected to U.S. import laws and taxation. It's economically pummeled with the average household income sitting at $16,000 a year. And that's the reality that my wife and I were shown in 2022 when we visited. And coupled with the vision that we were given for a community eco farm that was designed to not just heal the body but heal the soul and change the very fabric of people's lives there was no question for us we knew we knew so we journeyed back to wells we handed off the community directorship of the gathering place to an amazing leadership team who are doing an incredible job and in December 2023, our small family once again gave away everything we owned and we came here to Puerto Rico to help in any way that we could. And God willing, we're going to help shift the reality of this country with your help. And after arriving in Puerto Rico in December, we immediately began, we just immediately set to our search for potential locations that would suit our needs, which was going to be a little tricky. Because after all, the vision we had, it was quite specific. Because this project was not going to be something on three to four acres, but we knew it had to be close to Maya West, which severely limited our options. And there's ample farmland around this city, but unfortunately, much of this land is flood prone because of hurricanes and tsunamis. And when we began the search, we were joined by Heather and Zane Schott. They fell in love with the vision that we had and knew they had a role to play. And Heather had grown up in Puerto Rico. It's, it's part of her heritage, the daughter of missionary parents who served their community, literally giving everything of themselves for others. And this project, she had heard about it. It lit something on fire of, you know, in her belly, leading her into the beginning, beginning of her own healing and her own spiritual healing. And together, when she arrived, we began praying visits to these properties. And we would go and we would pray and we would find wonderful options, but nothing quite fitting the bill of what it was that we were looking for. And then one night, she sends me a message. She had found this very unique 64-acre property nestled in the hills of Mayuez, less than two miles from the city's suffering downtown. 
and we set a meeting with the owner of the property who had had it on the market for a while and we paid a visit and immediately we knew it was the land there was no doubt after passing the gate of the property we came to a thin strip of road climbing up to this beautiful hacienda parking in front of an already established, remember my vision, an already established two acres of vertical gardens right next to a livestock pen, right next to another large chicken coop. And we met the owner of the property, a man that had purchased the property seven years ago to turn it into a thriving eco farm but it was just him working on it. The owner loved this land, you could tell. And he walked us around showing us everything, showing us the plantains, the bananas, showing us the papaya, the guava, the passion fruit, showing us the cacao, the coffee, showing us everything. The land was lush. It was beautiful. It had a three bedroom house on the property with another standalone unit right next to it around a central courtyard, just like in my dream. This man had been here for seven years, building everything with his own hands, pesticide free, organic, house dripping in beauty, lush overgrowth. And walking the property was like walking with deja vu. Hearing his heart and the way that he loved what he grew and how he had taken care of the land. He showed me the long walkways lined with cacao all the way down to a beautiful river. And when we got there, the animals came out to play, immediately falling in love with our family. <laughs> playing with our children. And Mark also had started a project. cutting a road down to the river that circled the property. Showing us where he had cleared lands, where he had had hopes and dreams of putting tiny homes one day. And then he showed us a pool at the top of the mountain next to the house filled with fish. And then he told us during the hurricanes in 2017 and how the house was untouched by the hurricanes, how he had food to get through eight months with no power, but that encouraged him to make sure he had water filtration set up on the property, backed up by solar, how he had brought in generators to get off the grid, how he had helped others. Now, there's a bus line from the inner city that runs right up to the property and there was access to a local airport. What makes this property perfect is that it fits every bit of the vision. It checks every single box. This is the property that will help change the story for the people of Mayoez. But not just that, it will create a ripple effect that moves beyond this region and throughout Puerto Rico. We believe this project is a key to change, a small key that opens big doors of revolution, of sustainability, of working with the land, not against it, of raising crops that are native to Puerto Rico, moving away from the cash crops that have dominated the island for the last 130 years, but tapping into the DNA of this island to grow and produce what it does so well. This is going to be a place where people come to put their hands in the soil and to give and to take 
equally and in equal measure. It's not a place of escape. We're not doom and gloomers. We're futurists who believe the greatest days of humanity are ahead of us. And we have a role to play in this transformation. This is going to be a place where people come to realize their responsibility to steward the earth, to steward themselves, breaking off the chains of who they thought they were and stepping into the reality of who they were created to be. Because it's more than just about farmland and helping our neighbor. It's about becoming the best versions of ourselves and healing this world and making it look like heaven. Because I believe with all of my heart this is possible and I know that you have a role to play in all of this because it's not just about land. It's about connection. It's not about projects. It's about people. And through what I can only describe as divine encounters, we have made incredible connections already in the few short months we've been here within the community. We have the leading professor of soil science and the head research assistant of the university ready to join this project and help in any way they can, even using the property for classroom projects for their students, providing an immediate influx of local volunteers who in turn can let those in need know about this project. The professor of architectural engineering at Mayuez University has offered his services free of charge, offering to pull any permit needed for our building projects to assist in the design of our tiny home village and anything else we can dream of, and again has offered his students as volunteers to build these projects out to move things forward. We've met with another couple near Mayuez who's been pushing forward on a similar vein project for the last three years, sharing their advice and experiences, lending invaluable insight to what to expect bringing others into the property. We've been placed into contact with local food distribution charities throughout Mayuez, Maracao, Las Marias, who will be our initial hands and feet in making sure the produce of the land goes to those most in need first and work in union with us to meet the needs of the most vulnerable in the community. And we have a small team ready to move and get to work doing what needs to be done to prepare this property for its initial steps. And we have others willing to come and in their way with their essential roles to play. Anna Grace, I know you're listening in right now, but unable to join the video call. We're looking at you, kid. We know you have a special role here. Our timeline is to use our first six months on the property to begin putting the infrastructure in place to multiply what's currently being done. While the property is already yielding impressive amounts of produce, all of what's been done has been done by one man. With our small initial team, we're going to be expanding and modernizing and experimenting with new farm techniques, including permaculture and aquaponic concepts envisioned in places as far away as Sue's, South Africa, Kona, Hawaii, and cutting hydroponic techniques developed in the very unique location of Lexington, Kentucky. True story there. I can't tell you our source there. He's asked to remain private, but let me tell you, huge things are coming. We have the team ready to go, ready to not just simply serve people who've been pushed to the margins, but to change the fabric of a region and the destiny of a nation and the world. And we're not just talking about physically. We're talking about holistically, body, mind, spirit. We're talking renewal and restoration. And after the first six months of prep, garden regeneration, pond installations, and land clearance for additional farmland, we'll begin the installation of our tiny home village. And by December of 2024, we expect to be able to host visitors in the main house with the goal to launch our first retreat in April 2025, with the first steps taken with our tiny home village being able to host others, mission teams, visitors, and more. And after that is where the fun really begins, continually hosting teams from around the world who are coming here to work the land, find out who they really are, celebrating life and working with the community. But even greater than that, we're going to be live streaming events, retreats, classes, festivals, becoming an authority in this space. Because this entire journey is going to be shared online with daily and weekly updates. That's one of the essential keys. On social media combined, my wife and I have a social media following of over a quarter million people. I have the full expectation that this will quadruple 
over the next two years across multiple platforms, generating interest in additional substantial sources of revenue for this project. And the current owner of this property has even caught this vision. And this is where we need your help right now, today. The vision, the land, the abundance, the healing, the revolution that this land represents to the people of Mayuez and Puerto Rico and around the world, none of it happens without the land. The current owner of the property loves our vision. He sees that we're not just going to continue what he began on the land seven years ago, but we're going to take it to levels beyond what we're even imagining now. And because of this, this land that he had for sale for $1.5 million. He's offering it to us. 64 acres, everything on the land, the house, the animals, the vehicles, everything for $900,000. But we need to move immediately because he has other offers on the table. But he's holding out for us. I want you to understand this, that he's had offers for more money, but he is offering it to us for $100,000 less than his next offer because he believes in what we're doing, but he's got to leave the island immediately. We don't have much time and there's no time for delay. We need to generate $900,000 now. If we cannot pay off the 900000 immediately to secure a loan for the property, we need to raise an immediate 200000 including 50000 in clothing costs. And this is where we need you. To make this dream happen on this land, to change the lives of the people of Mayuez in ways that go way beyond what we even imagine, we need you to step in with a contribution, no matter how small. Small keys open big doors, okay? If you're catching the vision for this, I need you to share this video with others who might be interested in partnering with this project. But right now, you can go to the link below to contribute. Or if you would prefer wire transfer, I can supply that information at the close of this video. You can transfer funds through PayPal, awake to dream, inc at gmail.com is our PayPal address. We can do wire transfer, information upon request, or you can mail a check to 20600 CAR 102, Box 108, Cabo Rojo, Puerto Rico, 00623. We are a U.S. registered and Puerto Rico-based charity and licensed to do business in Puerto Rico. Your contribution is not going to Jennifer or me or Zane or Heather or to our trustees or our core team. In fact, it's not even possible for payments to be made to Jennifer and I or the trustees from the Awake to Dream bank account. We don't pay salaries. We don't earn a dime. Every penny that's entered into this account will go to the land itself, either for its purchase or for what goes onto the land. Your contribution goes immediately to Awake to Dream INC, and because of this, it will be tax deductible. But what happens after we purchase the land? That's the question. How do we maintain? How do we grow? How does your investment blossom? After purchasing the land, that's the key. After purchasing the land, as Awake to Dream is a U.S. and Puerto Rico registered charity and nonprofit, we're immediately eligible for a tremendous amount of USDA and foundationally backed grants. As, over la as last year, over $1.6 billion in grant monies for farm projects were available to Puerto Rico. And while our first year grant availability will be low because we're start our charity here is just starting out, by year two, we'll be eligible for approximately 125,000 grant funds. And at the completion of year three, that's when we meet the establishment threshold. Current estimates put us eligible for almost a half million dollars in grant funds. Don't get me started on year four and five because that's when it gets really exciting. This is how we funded the gathering place in the UK. After we got the property, immediately we set to work on grants and the grants started rolling in. And that is what will happen here, the property first. And additionally, after year one and opening up the farm to outside teams, I've conservatively estimated our income from visitors and teams to bring in an estimated $57,000 a year, with online donations conservatively equaling $52,000 a year in addition to available grants, and that is on the conservative side. In full truth, by the end of years two and three, I estimate an annual revenue growth of almost 100%, and this is based on our prior experience with our Gathering Place charity, which more than doubled its revenue growth between 2022 and 2023 once people caught the vision. 
and this vision is considerably more explosive. And did I also mention that Awake to Dream is not designed to turn a profit? We are a nonprofit. No salaries to anyone or personal incomes are generated independently of the charity. And as part of the Constitution, every penny that's raised goes right back into the charity and into the farmland, cementing a legacy that will not just exist to help, but exists to inspire and innovate and expand for generations. In partnering with us, you're more than donating to a charity. You're donating to a life-changing revolution, a world-tilting revolution, a movement that I believe holds the key to changing the destiny of a region and then a nation and in the world. This farm will serve as an example of transformation where earth looks like heaven and showing it's possible elsewhere and showing people how to do it how to turn their own land into heaven on earth. Because it's not about just bringing in, it's about pushing out and into the world, establishing heaven on earth. And of course, our partners, that's you, will receive exclusive access to project developments, recognition for their contributions, invitations to special events, ensuring they're closely connected to this project's heart and progress because it's not just our story it's yours and it doesn't happen without the land which means it doesn't happen without you so I'm asking today for you to make a difference the time is now so at this time I'm going to open things up to a little Q&A we're going to open up the floor. What are some questions or concerns that you have? I'm going to stand up and stretch a little bit. And I'm going to open up the chat lines and microphones for now for you to ask some questions. If I may share, I'm very um, honored to be a part of this. A lot of this is not about individuals or glory or look at me. This is really about how we can contribute, give 100%. It's true volunteerism, no expectation of reward outside of personal accomplishment and the gratitude and joy we see in those that we affect. We've all probably seen abject poverty, but when you see it here, it's beyond anything I've seen in the Appalachians. It's beyond anything I've seen in Jamaica. It's beyond anything I've seen in, you know, in, in, a, in the lower islands. It's, it's tragic. And so to be able to have an outreach and a direct impact that's not just for the moment, but it's actually generational change and allows for others to develop so they too can have the tools and be equipped to be able to uh, make a difference in their lives and their families' lives. It's not about what we touch, it's about what they touch and can grow beyond that. That's why I'm here and that's why I'm willing to give whatever I can to make this happen. And I'm grateful to be here. Guys, I wanna, I wanna, um, I wanna take a moment to really I want to honor all of you for be sticking with this this long with all the technical difficulties, but I really want to take a moment to honor Zane and Heather. They have literally uprooted their entire lives for this project. They live in the same condo as we do. They moved here because of this project. They've shifted their lives, their businesses, because they own multiple businesses. They have shifted uh, their, their father, who has dementia, who's amazing, by the way. They've brought him here for this, because they believe in this so much because Heather, I, I'm not going to steal her thunder. She can tell her story if she wants. Um, she may want to, she might not. But, but, but her history here as a missionary kid was hard. It was hard. Stories of, she told me stories of beautiful miracles, but also incredible pain. And coming here again 
it, her story is just is just amazing. They didn't have to come here. <laughs> this was they could have they could have done everything, you know, from the mainland. But they believe and they see what's happening here, and they believe in this so much. It's it's amazing just to see what's happened with them. So I just want to take a special moment to honor them for that uh, and for the transformation that's happening in their lives as well. It's, it's just been, it's just been amazing. I really uh, think I, I am um, of Puerto Rican descent. My mom's mom was Puerto Rican and when we lived here, we came with Youth with a Mission and then eventually moved to my great uncle's church retreat center. And that's where dad took over for there. And that's where most of my memories were after the, after the, but it was hard. It was a hard life here. Um, we lived below the poverty line. We didn't have food. We, in fact, there was a section of time where we would eat the food that they threw out for the pigs and pick the bugs out of what wasn't crawling. And that's what we ate. Um, I never wanted to come back here. I am so honored. I am so blessed. And I am so different because the Lord has stepped into my life and given us this beautiful gift. You never tell God never number one and number two you dream bigger than you ever thought dreaming because there is no time and there is no space and a time, god is and a time to act in a time to act is now yeah this is this is massive this is this project is so beautifully laid out and settled and and it's going to be and i i'm going to tell it like it is too we need all of the money now we need the money mm -hmm. to make this happen it takes more than just us. Yes. It takes all of us to do this. And it's more, we need to get it to a place that we can just go. And being a business-minded person, yes. this is not about something to start. This is about something that can be sustained. The plan is uh, laid out well. And so it is not just kindling for the fire. It is actually building a fire. Right. And that's why I'm a part of it, yes. because it is rooted in well-considered thought. It is it is in phases. It is it makes total sense. The outreach, the impact, the multipliers of what comes through. And as a business person, this is an incredible investment. And the fact that nobody is in any way um, uh, being There's able no to- paychecks. Yeah. This is all no um, sweat, sweat equity, <laughs> everything, everything gets poured into this because we can see what the effect it's going to have on the people directly. It's amazing when talking about this project with the people of Puerto Rico, because folks, I don't know if you know this or not, uh, but uh, there's a gringo issue in Puerto Rico <laughs> where if you're not from Puerto Rico, you're called a gringo. It's not meant as an insult. It's just the way that they they can tell who's from here and who's not from here. And I'm going to be real. Uh, gringos have a very bad reputation in Puerto Rico once you get off the resort. Um, and the reason that is, is because, uh, in general, people come here to take, they come here and, uh, they're not pouring in as much like people are like, oh, well, they're bringing tourist dollars. But what is happening is, uh, with those dollars, uh, the more tourist dollars that are, that tend to be spent, uh, the more prices increase, uh, in, in, and in, in the people that live here who only make $16,000 a year per household on average uh, get priced out. And so there is a large movement here um, that is anti-gringo. However, the beauty of this project is that every single person, spare none, Every single person on this island that I have discussed this project with has been moved to tears. Every single one at the banks, when I go to set up, when I've gone to set up the accounts at the U, the USD off DA office, when we, when we said, Hey, we're a charity, da, 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 da. the lady looked at us just like she was completely stunned. She was, 
blown away. They are so used to people coming here and coming here to exploit and take that when they are meeting people that are coming here to live and to give. The look on their faces, it just, it, it changes you. It lets you see that just, I'm not just one person. I'm, I, 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 I'm representing something new. I'm, resi- I'm representing a renewal of, of heart and spirit. And to have a property where people here know that people are coming from the mainland, not to take, but to give. It is it world changing. I never, knew, I never knew what yeah. hope looked like. That's it. Until That's I saw it. It in the, the lady at the USDA where she was. That was it. Stunned. And then I saw what the face of hope looked like. Mm-hmm. It changes. It, it is. Everything. It's unreal. It changes everything. It, it changes everything. We we the minute the, the divine. I, I, that's all. That's the best way I can explain it. Divine encounter. Divine encounter. When we go and we talk to someone and and they find out what we're doing and they're like, oh, well, this I know this person and they work here. They would love to be a part of that. The minute I talked to, I had no idea who this guy was. Uh, I, I was just, I was just this this guy had this realtor guy, or I thought was a realtor, was driving some folks around and looking at property. And I started speaking to him and and found out he's the professor of 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 engineering, architectural engineering, at the university, right down the road, and his mouth fell open and, and within five minutes i had his phone number I had i had his email addresses and he was you know he sent me a message saying you know any building permit you need i've got you don't worry about the cost any building plan you need i've got you any any uh, my students can come, come and help build and we can use it as 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 engineering prod, uh, project for our school it was the same thing with the professor of soil science. It's the same. <laughs> our kids' karate instructor. We put our kids in karate lessons, and this guy is now leading community outreach. And our <laughs> and, and our kids were out there just the other day. They had a community it was going to houses, cleaning them up, and our kids were out there. Our little kids were out there seven thirty in the morning, helping him clean up the houses of people who couldn't help themselves. What this project is already doing, and we don't even have the land yet. There we are. I see you. Well, once again, hopefully you can see me. Once again, we are in the midst of technical difficulties. Um, guys, I I can't thank you enough for your time today. I know we've gone over more than expected but we need your help now. So I am asking for you to contribute. We need 900,000 and we needed it a week ago. (laughs) But I know this is going to happen. I thank you. I thank you. I hope that you've caught the vision at least a little bit or that you're with this in full. Again, you can give through PayPal, Wake to Dream Inc. 
at gmail.com or wire transfer. If you want to know how to do that, message me separately. You know how to get in touch with me. Or feel free if you need to, to mail a check to Awake to Dream at the listed address that I posted earlier. And I can also post that again. I want to thank you guys. If you guys know of anyone who wants to trade in, if you know of anyone who wants to trade in, if you know of anyone that can help, please reach out to them or reach out to me, give me their information and I can reach out to them. But I want to honor you for your time. Thank you, even though we've gone over. And if there's no more questions, does anybody have any other questions? All right. So with that, no questions asked. I want to thank you. God bless you. Hey, Ken. Yes. Thank you, Philip. Oh, hi. Hey, hey. sorry. I, I was asking a question, but I was still muted. Sorry about that. Uh, hey, thank you for doing this. I appreciate everything that you're doing. You guys have been a huge encouragement to me and my faith and my wife and all of that stuff through your ministry online. Uh, that's how we ran into you. Thanks. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I, I've just been so discouraged, um, with my own evangelical faith tradition and mm. been hungry and longing for something real. I remember 15 years ago, watching a Ted talk about a chef, uh, and his, uh, discovery of foie gras that was <laughs> developed naturally on the land using regenerative farming and all of this stuff. And I remember telling my wife, it's like, this is the gospel. This is like when, <laughs> when people work in conjunction with nature to bring yes. about beautiful things and, yes. and make heaven on earth, yes. this, is, this is far more real than any of the propaganda that, that we were being yes. fed. So uh, everything that you're doing here just aligns so much with my wife and I. My, my big question is, and she's an herbalist and, and all of that stuff and has a Amazing. TikTok channel with believe it or not over a quarter of a million followers awesome <laughs> uh uh and i'm just wondering is there a way do you have any kind of shorter two minute 60 second any sort of thing that could be reposted reshared that i could send out to people that i know who might be interested in donating like how what is there a, sure. a way that we can get the word out and if not is there a way i can help to make that happen Absolutely. Um, so right now, uh, within the next day or so, I've got to set it up uh, on. I've got to set it up through a password protected way to way to get to it. Basically, what will and, and I have the Zane to thank for this. We are putting together what's called a one page business proposal, uh, which basically will have all the neat and skinny on one simple PDF. And if they're interested in going further, what can happen is they can they can follow the link and the link will take them to a stored database of photos, pictures uh, of of plans, uh, different things that that we are putting together. Um, that should be available, I would say, within the next 48 hours. Um, I would love to send that to you. Absolutely. Um, also, when we're done with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and enter it into some AI stuff. And what we'll do is we'll clip out essential segments and we'll put it together. To be honest with you, because of the technical difficulties that came about with, with, with this today, I might just reshoot this whole thing entirely um as a presentation uh mm -hmm. that was my intent was to have this done so i could shoot this as a presentation and store it up onto youtube and and also be able to as an unlisted link be able to send it out to someone if they were interested in going further 
Um, so what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to reshoot this again. So I'll have that available as well. So that will all of that will be available to you as well as the different things I've put together on TikTok, YouTube, et cetera. So you'll be able to access that and send that at any time. So I'll be happy to send that to you. But yes, uh, long story short, the answer is absolutely yes. That's what we're going to do. Um, and that was kind of the intent with this and to be able to like cut it up. But unfortunately, uh, Technical, technicality has gotten the way a little bit, but, but yes. Um, and yeah, that would be fantastic. Uh, we, we, my wife and I firmly believe, uh, my wife, uh, drug me kicking and screaming into this, uh, but believing in, uh, you know, food is medicine and I'm still learning this. And this is just something that she was this mentality that she was raised with that we are a result of what we put into our body. So garbage in, garbage out. And that infect that that infects and affects and infects everything in our bodily systems. So part of what we'll be doing on the farmland is really going for as much clean, uh, clean eating, clean production, organic, fresh uh, heirloom seeds, et cetera, et cetera, as humanly possible, uh, which. Because we believe that with uh, we've seen it happen. It, we've seen it happen in my life. I've I've had uh, in my life. I've uh, man, gosh, I I've had some stuff, and I used to. And I mean, I guess I still have it. It's just a bay, an autoimmune disorder that my entire body would break out in welts and rashes and stuff like that. But what we did over time, and it took my wife years to do, to to help me with this, moving to a better a better diet of, and regarding food. And I, I don't do it. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't do it as well as I should. I, I like fried food a little too much. Um, but moving to uh, uh, viewing what you consume as medicine, it's amazing. It's amazing what happens to people when you remove ultra processed food out of their diets. It is amazing what happens to people. When we do that. It I, is. I have a feeling our wives would have a lot to share with their reluctant husbands on this uh, health <laughs> journey. But <laughs> well, I don't want to take up everybody's time. Maybe you and I could chat later. I yes. I own a visual effects company. We do visual effects for movies and TV shows, and stuff like that. And we've with the strikes and everything, we've been down and you know really really slow. But I have uh, some editors available, whatever. Like if it makes sense to set up oh, a Dropbox, really? like yes, I would love to 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 like help get like a little one minute two minute sort of sizzle reel type things that 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 socials could could share and then we moved three years ago to tennessee to just sort of get out of california and we've connected with the homestead community out here there's a big homestead festival that uh is here in middle tennessee that um i know rory fleek is the guy who runs it and he's a former Grammy award-winning country music singer and all of that stuff. And literally hundreds and thousands of people come uh, every year and that's coming up in May. And that community is full of people who would love to get behind something like this. And I'm not, I don't want to speak for him, his organization, sure. anything, but, you know, having something quick and digestible that I can show on my phone to somebody Absolutely. You know, I really think that, you know, I know you need have an urgent need, um, but let, let's just talk later, figure yeah, something sure. out. Um, that, that's amazing. I don't want to take up everybody's time. All right. Well, thanks that's again. Right. And I'm in my car, awesome. just inspired by your TikToks. That's why I'm here. <laughs> it's a great acoustics. All right. The, the, <laughs> the, the interior of the car is the modern day campfire. That's, that's, yeah. that's how I look at it. It's true. Thanks so much. All right. That's awesome. Yes. Well, thanks, Ken. You're very welcome. Anyone else? Hi, Ken. Um, my name is Leo. Uh, um, I'm actually, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. <clears throat> oh, beautiful. What um, part? I I grew up in Caramanas, which is on the northeast part okay. of the island, uh, which is very country. Like, I grew up in the you know, like in the mountains, like my mom's road doesn't really have a name. Um, I want to preface that I, I hear, I, uh, I hear and I, and, and I understand the urgent need and, and I'm going to give what little, you know, I do have, uh, 
I would try to give some. Uh, me and my family, we're, we're actually going to move back to Puerto Rico soon, hopefully this year. Um, for other reasons, I just happened to see you on my feed and, you know, and on t- 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 TikTok, which I, I kind of see it as a divine intervention for me. <laughs> um, but uh, I just want to say for those that are listening, uh, what, what he's talking about, one thing is to hear it from a different perspective and to show it through pictures and and videos and then another thing is to live it i lived it yes um that whole you know when the power was going out in your apartment (laughs) i was laughing because i'm like this happens to this happened to me It it happens to my mom today still it happens every day uh and i'm uprooting my family where we're at today uh in the U.S. to go, uh, to go back for because we just felt called to go over there. We didn't know why, uh, mm. um, but we're just doing it, you know, out of faith. Um, I will give whatever little I I do have. In addition, if you ever need, I have six years in the army. Uh, Come on, brother. I, I mean, out there duty and 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 I do have a lot of skills. You know, you know, I'm fully bilingual. You know, I can teach. English and Spanish, and I used to teach Sunday school as well, both in English and in Spanish. You know, I have a lot of things. That, you know, we we have a lot to give. I will try to share this message and share your videos to as many people as I know and as I can. But I'm just trying to let the people know here that uh, don't be afraid to um uh, to speak and to share and to ask questions. Uh, I know that you don't know me. You know, I met you through like the interwebs. <laughs> But I do share your dream, uh, and I will try to make it possible. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, when it becomes possible, not if but when, uh, I would like to meet you, you know, in person, and, and then help you to continue to build this farm. Uh, uh, and I, I just wanted to say thank you, uh, Ken. Oh man, you just write me, bro. Um, <laughs> thanks, dude. Uh, hey, hey, bro. Maybe- and listen, listen, I. I get it. I I get it. I if we meet in person, I will tell you my story in the faith. It's it's kind of unique compared to most people, and I don't share it publicly because it is uh, sensitive in that way. Um, I understand. I I understand. I met many missionaries in my life, and I've always wanted to be one. However, now that I'm a father. And um and I'm a husband. It's the reality of being one. It's very different. And I know what it is to work in the field when I was in the army. Spent mm-hmm. ten months out just to mind you. You know we had the resources because you know it's an organization. But one thing is you doing what we like to do from the comfort of our homes, and then the other thing is just taking your family and doing it somewhere else completely different. <laughs> uh, that is what it means to be in the field. Uh, yeah. And bro, I really, I'm gonna try and support with whatever I can. I'm not rich, hey, but bro. I would. You, you, you have blessed me. You have blessed us so much. And that, that's the thing is that like people who haven't been here off the resort they don't get it. They're like, oh, Puerto Rico, man, you know, and, and they don't, they don't see the, the crumbling infrastructure, the crumbling systems. Uh, I mean, it's not all, I mean, it's not all bad. I mean, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. It is just the raw beauty here and the people here, my goodness, other than traffic, uh, (laughs) but the people here, my goodness, man, and just the hearts and, and then, and and when you being from here and moving back, and for you to speak into this, it it just it it makes it does two things. It makes my heart sing. That's number one. Um, but two, number two, just just knowing that we are in a place where where we can make such a difference because most people live their lives going. And I'm going to start preaching, so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to go too long here. But <laughs> most people live their lives wanting to see change, right? Like you know, there, there's this meme online: "Who wants to see change?" And everybody raises their hands. And then, and then it's the the person asks the question: "Who wants to change?" And nobody raises their hand. You know, 
And to 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 live a life like that, where you're where you're 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 taking your family, you know, uh, and we have small kids ages nine, seven, six, and four, and taking them and moving them to a place where sometimes the power goes out for nine hours a day, for no reason. Yes, that happened. That happened yesterday, or not yesterday, the day before yesterday. Or when the internet just stops working for no reason, or when or when essential services essential services just break down, and you know there's a part of you that's like, wow, you know what am I doing? But then when you're here and you're in it and you're like, there is no place, there is no place I would rather be in this world than right now, right now in this place where I know that we have been called to, not because we're super special. Not because like there's nothing there's nothing super dynamic about us. It's just that we say yes to what the good Lord says. And 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 I know some of you might not might on here be like, ah, oh, you know, I don't believe in that stuff. But I'm telling you right now, I don't care if you believe in it or not. I do. I do. And our family does. And we know that we are agents of change no matter where we go. We know that we that the Lord has gifted every single person in this world, the ability to shift atmospheres, to govern from the heavens, to see from heaven's perspective on what is to be. So when I look at Puerto Rico, yes, I see, I see broken homes. I see, I see an ocean right now. I, I can go up on my roof and I can look out and in the distance, I can see an ocean that here in my West, I cannot swim in. I can see the factories. I can see the refineries. I can see the, the environmental damage that's happening here. But I can also see what, what, what the Lord is wanting to release in this region from the people who lean in and lean on him and know that there's more to life than just surviving. That I can see what this farmland is a symbol of what it represents. And for $900,000 for 64 acres in the United States, on the mainland, that would be millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. And here is being offered to us for 900,000. It's a miracle in itself. And I know, I don't have a doubt that we're going to receive that money. I know it. I know it. And I know that that farm is going to be paid off within five to seven years if we don't pay it off in full up front, which I fully believe and fully intend to see happen. Amen. I know, I know no matter what, through grants, through people visiting, through the, what that symbolizes. Just like, you know, just like talking about the guy out in, uh, you know, out in, uh, uh, out on the West Coast that that's holding these events where thousands of people are people are coming. We have seen that on this property. We have seen festivals where people who come are coming to 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 join in with music, to join in with dance, to join in with song. Who are going to immediately turn around and bless, not take, but bless the people of this city, of this area. It's an honor. It is an honor to be part of the forerunning team to make this happen. And I love it. There's no place I'd rather be. I don't care what hurricanes. I don't care what tidal waves. I don't care what earthquakes. I don't care because I know this is where we're supposed to be. I have no doubt. And I know, I know what's going to happen to this country. And because it happens in this country, it's going to serve as an example and it's going to affect the world. I know it. I know it with my heart of hearts. I will take every dime, every dollar I've ever learned and I will put it on the table. I've put our family's lives on the very table because we believe in this. My wife believes in this. Heather and Zane believes in this. Sue and Jacob believe in this. The people who are coming to help believe in this. And you guys who are watching this, I know, believe in this. So I just want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
Thank you for joining us in this journey. It's nice to know we are not alone, right? We know that there's, there's, th this is, this is just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And thank you. Does I anybody something. else? Yep. Oh, hi. Hi, Isaac, how are you? It's nice meeting you all. Good. Nice meeting you all. Um, oh, God bless I can you all. I, where are you from, Lizette? I am from Puerto Rico. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Where are you um, from? Moved to the States when I was 17. Um, I was raised in Levitown, the part, the north part of the island by Dorado okay. and Tua Baja. Okay. 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 Um, my, my, my friends mm -hmm. in, uh, my friend's charity is in Vega Baja. Right in your okay. Yeah. yeah. Close to there. Mm hmm um, so I am part with One Love uh, United. Uh, Lydia is also on the call, and we're a nonprofit that is serving the Caribbean. Um, oh, the Lord has beautiful. called us into the Caribbean uh, with uh, the same vision that you have, uh, is to build up the um, um, the riches and the heritage that is in the islands, that it's yes. in the lands that the Lord created for the people, right? That yes. The sustenance is in the land because the Lord has provided it already, yes. right? Yes, um, but sure. the years of the people coming in to steal and to take and, you know, from the beginning of the Caribbean history, right? Yes. Uh, I don't want to go back into history, but, you know. <laughs> um, okay, going on to today, um, I, I am going to say I was called to my island, okay, as a Nehemiah person, right, as an mm -hmm. Esther, um, an intercession and to rebuild uh, after Hurricane Maria. Come on. Um, the Lord was already showing me things as I, I was going back to visit as a tourist in my land, right, and visit, not as a tourist, but as a visiting family, but um, when the Lord was showing uh, these things, these issues to me, uh, these different things, the Lord was like, study this, and study that, and study the history of this, and how do you, you know, all of these things, um, I have been for a long time kind of declaring the word of the Lord over the island, that is my job as a prophetic person, um, yeah. I really ask, uh, okay, I'm going to do singly, but then with, I'll tell you later with one love, uh, Lydia will probably join in uh, really fast. I know this is going to be a long call, but, um, I'm going to work. So, um, so, uh, okay. The place that you are right, actually we're going to Puerto Rico next week. So we, we have to meet you in person. We're yes, going please. as in our mission. Uh, yes. we're coming over there. Okay. Um, what the Lord has sort of put in my heart is that we're going back to basics. We're going back to the land. We're going back to what he gave us, right? Aside from the commercial, the take-in, the, all of this stuff, the enslaving of the system of the world that has yes. created all of these issues that we have, yes. right? Um, he's bringing us back to what he gave us, the nutrition, the, you know, how do we ward off all of these things? You know, like you have to be, you know healthy you have to be and i already gave you these things i gave you the tools to live right so it's a new way of life right the lord is giving us a new way of life that he had already created from the beginning but it's new for us because we haven't lived it right right um okay secondly um so the word that the lord that we proclaimed last year was 2023 and we'll talk more with you about this when we visit you um because there's so much into that but um was blessing Yes. Um, it was from Maya West. It was from Maya West. That's what we say. The Lord took us there and we declare a blessing. Declare the word for blessing um, in Maya West. And it is mainly like we have been really speaking into the land, into the mountains, the rivers, like all of that um, for the, the richness of the Lord's blessing to be uncovered in the island. So it's like it's like a new discovery of Puerto Rico. That's what I call it. It's a new <laughs> discovery. We have new people who are coming to discover but it's discovering the blessing the, the yes. blessing that the, the the blessing because we're children of abraham and we have a blessing that we have and that we have to give right and so you know it, it's it's all of that so i just wanted to confirm what you're doing because this is you're really like the physical you're really like the answer to the prayer and to everything that's been um that we have seen that we have declared that we have done in the island um you're pretty much an answer to that prayer so i just want to let you know and definitely we will be visiting you next week when we come um if the lord wills uh, and we will just do that through email we will uh, set up an yes. appointment yes oh my gosh oh i'm crying over here um <laughs> uh wow you know first uh, lizette and leo we have yet to meet i look forward yes they're not known to each other, but our hearts are known. When we speak of heaven on earth, it is our hearts and our call to action and our ability to serve and affect others. And it is of the purest of, which goes beyond ourselves. And this outpouring that flows through is from, from God himself. 
I look yes. forward to not just meeting, but working with you and moving forward our vision of how we're going to affect the islands here. It yes. is a rediscovering, and that is, it is, it is, it, it is a joy to be to be in service. Yes. Thank you for your heartful message. Thank you, thank Amen. you so much, Lizette. Yes, we will. I will. I will move mountains, if if necessary, next week, so that we can we can meet up. Um, Lizette, uh, that's you're the that same as amazing. my oldest daughter. <laughs> Lizette, our oldest daughter is Lizette, but with a Y. So that was pretty neat to see. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That means Elizabeth, by the way. Yeah. In <laughs> so Lizette, real quick, yes. uh, and and uh, I didn't put this in the presentation, but. Um, my wife and I, as part of uh, how we have done work in the past, when we go to other countries, when we when we become like you know, uh, what we try to do uh, is, and it's and it's always tricky, you know, when you come in as an outsider, you know, uh, it's always tricky because you want to make sure that you're honoring, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and and that we're not just doing something to do it. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're, we don't ever take away that we did something somewhere and we just try to plant a box. And so when we were in Wales, one thing that we, we felt, and you, you actually said it, uh, but one thing that the Lord always impressed on us, and it really irritated a lot of other at, you know, at the time we were missionaries. Uh, so it really irritated other religious groups that were missionaries that worked with us because we're not going to do what is an outside, what is not native to the land. We don't want to do it. We, mm -hmm. we, what we do is we, we exist under this. And I, and I said it a couple of times uh, in the presentation, but we exist under this idea of discovering the song of the land. And the mm -hmm. song of the land is its people, but it's more than just the people. It's what has been put there from generations. It's what the Lord put there from, from, from creation. And, 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 to, and we're not coming to do our thing and put our thing in a place. We are coming to dig into put our, and release what is already there. So one of the one of the things that was impressed upon us by the Lord and was also impressed upon us with and I and he likes his privacy. So I've not mentioned him in this presentation, but he's a very, very amazing fella, <laughs> uh, very well connected. Uh, one of the things that he pressed upon us in some of our in our meetings before moving here was get back to what was formed in this land before mm -hmm. the land was raped by the outsider. Mm -hmm. And the soil, one mm -hmm. of the things I did was a, a short soil study before moving here to see how much the nutrients in the soil have been depleted by commercial farming, by, you know, first by, you know, the, the, by the end of things by the Spanish, but then especially with the cash crops when America took over, uh, took over Puerto Rico in the late 1800s and began, you know, basically mm -hmm. just getting rid of what was native to the land and putting in their cash crops. Um, and so one of the searches that, that we've been doing um, or that I have been doing rather is finding out what is what was native here first and and experimenting with that. Now on this property that we're looking at, there is there you know there are some citrus trees and stuff that are not laid and, and the uh, the gentleman that that lives here has also put some figs in, which are amazing, but he's not using them as like great big crops. They're basically, you know, he's got like a fig tree <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But like what we like really feel true, Truly called to do is what we produce is what was native to the soil because when you uh, from a DNA not just from a physical but from a metaphysical from a spiritual from a spiritual standpoint once that is planted that's what flourishes that's what w belonged here that was what was deposited here and so we really have it in in us to really move into that. That is why when, when we were connected, uh, divine, and I'm just going to say divinely connected by uh, the professor of soil science here at Myowas University, uh, 
And 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 we were telling him about the project and how, you know, about the story. Immediately, he, his, his eyes just like exploded. He was just like, he, he couldn't stop talking. Like he just started and he got so technical, like he lost me quick. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but 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 like just like having someone here like that on the ground who is going to help us uh, with that and then having someone like you who who has been praying into this who's been interceding into this who's been who is actually here apparently not too long ago praying blessing in this area in 2023 uh that is that is beyond coincidence that is beyond coincidence that is that is i i believe that is a divine mandate so so yes we are we are going to meet next week uh, and, uh, it, 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 as long as you guys can get here, I will find a way I'll travel wherever needs to happen. Um, but we we'll, let's, let's, let's meet this week. I'm very, I'm very excited to talk I, and I'm very, and the screen's not frozen. I'm just kind of at a, I'm just blown away. I, I'm blown away. <clears throat> I'm blown away by what by what God does and how this was all part of something already. And all we had to do is just be obedient and step into it, you know, and uh, thank you. And thank you for releasing that to me. Thank you for being bold enough to speak up on a forum with a lot of people and say that to us. Um, and I just, I just honor you. Our whole purpose and point in being here um, is to honor. Uh, in Wales, <laughs> uh, in Wales, my wife and I had a reputation amongst the people of Wales. Uh, they said, because at the time we were missionaries, we don't look at ourselves as missionaries now. Uh, we are in Puerto Rico for life. And if you've ever known me, you know that's a very rare thing for me to say. And I know that there are some people that are listening right now who have known me for a very long time. And they're just like, wow, I can't believe Ken just said that. Um, we are here for life. We believe in this. We love this land, even with the failing electricity, even with the earthquake that we had the other day. Even with, even with, uh, you know, all, all the things, there's no place else we are supposed to be right now. And we are fully committed with our lives to seeing the transformation here that we know exists. Because when I see my Wes, I don't see all the, I mean, yeah, physically, I see the destruction. I see my kid's karate dojo. I, Five meter walk down the beach, houses are collapsed. They've been there since 2020 from, mm -hmm. the, from the earthquake, the 6.4. Um, I see all that, but I also see what heaven sees. When, when you see the people here, the, the university professor, the... Uh, the architectural engineer, he was telling me, he was like, he goes, you don't understand. He, go, he was crying when we were talking. I'm not a crier, just so you know. I know it looks like I am right now. Uh, but <laughs> he said, he said, you don't understand. He said, I have students that don't eat. He said, I have students who've literally spent every dime to go to school, to get an apartment, to have housing, who don't, who eat a meal a day if they're lucky. He's like, you have no idea what something like this will do for the community. And so I got in touch with a number of local charities, dis distribution charities that, that deliver food here in Mayuez, Las Marias, and uh, Maracal. And uh, when I told them what we're doing with our farm, they were just like, 
well, how do you, how are you going to survive? How can you, how can you do that with grants? And I was like, no one takes a salary. I was like, no one takes a cut of the profit. I was like, every bit of grant money that comes in, every investment dollar that comes in goes to the mission, goes to the project of seeing this earth look like heaven. And we do that by serving our fellow man. And we do that by giving of ourselves because we give out of what fills us. So when you're filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, when you're, when, you're, when you're overflowing with that fruit of the Spirit, that fruit flows out. And in, in, in our case, in this place, when we get this property, is actually going to flow out as actual fruit, as actual food, as actual love. So, so, yes, thank you. Thank you. We're meeting next week. Amen. Does anyone else like to ask a question? Anyone else would like to share? Um, I just want to thank you for this time and your heart and sharing. Um, my name is Lydia. I, Lissa and I work together at One Love United. And so yeah. I'm emailing you now on the Revealed Ministries, Inc. Yes. Um, so we can set that up. I did reach out a couple of times and I think it's just, I mean, you're doing a lot. So praise God that that it's all working together. But um, have you we'll messaged me? let me ask this question. So I need to, uh, so I can see where I can, I need to make an improvement. Where have you messaged me at? Um, I've messaged through, um, through TikTok. I've I tried that way. And let me check. Um, I just want to make sure so I can tell you. Well, I can't find the email now. I think it's it's on our other email, but I'll I'll copy it so that way you can see. But I did our um our TikTok account is at Adventures and One Love with the number okay. one. Okay. So if you see a message from that. That's that's us. I apologize for not getting in touch with you on TikTok, but if you look at my TikTok, these yeah, are Yeah, no, I, that's what I'm saying. I totally get it. <laughs> You're doing beautiful work and you're telling a beautiful story, a really necessary story. So I just wanted to connect a name and a face and 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 really just co-sign everything that Lisette shared. I mean, we've been pressing into it and the Lord has really been so faithful, even just to see that he's calling others to this work. It's not just us praying into something that we're not sure what it's going to be. Like we see the Lord calling his people to, to these things. And it's just very encouraging. So thank you for your obedience. And, you know, we're going to continue to pray and see, you know, how we can come alongside you and, and do what the Lord is calling you to do. Thank you so much. Um, Lydia, are, are you from Puerto Rico? Uh, my family is of Puerto Rican descent. I am, I am a New Year Rican. So I'm Puerto yeah. Rican. Through, through new york <laughs> through new york okay um that that's amazing uh i i uh i i want to encourage you um you said something about people being called here um i know i have been contacted by at least well over a hundred people who have offered to come and join in this project once we get the land purchased and once we get things rolling. I, I, people from, from all over the world who have, who have uh, just said, there is something happening in Puerto Rico. There is something happening here. And it's not just us. There are other, as you guys well know, there are other organizations around the island that that are people don't understand this island is only 30 30 miles you know long by or 100 miles long and 30 miles wide you know it's it's not big now it takes time to get around because traffic is uh but you know <laughs> and the roads are uh but you know it's it is mind-boggling to me how many people are reaching out and when they realize when i tell them how inexpensive it is to travel here, um, people don't understand. Like, like when I'm like, look, you know, Frontier, they run specials where it's only, you know, 
$59. Sometimes kids fly free. Like my kids, you know, I, I joined the thing. And I was like, it, it is so cheap and inexpensive to fly here from the mainland. And so people are like getting encouraged. They're like, you mean like I can just come down there for like a week or two and, you know, like, like I can bring a team of folks. I have so many people going, I, I've got a team of folks. So when I say there's at least over a hundred, that, that number is probably exponential of, of people that, that the Lord has burdened or some, some folks aren't even Christian. They're like, I, I, I don't know why, like, I'm not even Christian. I want to be a part of this project. You're actually doing like some amazing things. And there are so many people that I cannot wait to start hosting people on this property who have the right heart. Because like I said, it's not an escape. This isn't going to be a place where people are coming to, you know, survive the end of the, any of that garbage. It's, this is where people are going to come and work the land to provide for the people that are here. It, but in so doing, they find out who they really are. They find out who, what the Lord says about them because, because what, I, what, what I am finding is when people begin to give of themselves, um, they, feel, they find out, wait a minute, we're not all supposed to just be, and, and I'm guilty of this just as much as anybody, but we're not supposed to be sitting here just on our phones all day, you know, talking, telling people on social media how things are supposed to be. We're actually supposed to come and do it. And, and there is a movement, especially, especially with Gen Zers, especially with uh, uh, later millennials, that, that they, are, they are seeing projects like this and, and like they're, they're like, wait, I can be the hand, actual hands and feet of Jesus. And I can come here and I can, and I can work with people who are of like mind and like spirit and like heart, and we can change the world. And they're, they're believing they can change the world. And so I know that this, this, this property here in my West is just a start. It's just a start. And I'm so excited for people in this community to know that people are coming. Because one of the beautiful things about my West is that the reason my wife and I fell in love with it is my wife and I got down here to my West. This was back in 2022 when we first came to visit and I looked around and we were the only gringos here. Like we were, we were like, you know, it's like people were looking at us like, like, Hmm, what are those? <laughs> you know, cause like, you know, like the North part of the Island, you know, lots of, lots of American, lots of English, lots of, you know, but down here, Espanol, and, uh, and, um, and it's, and I love it. I love it. I love it here. I love it. I, I, I would not live. I don't want to live anywhere else on this Island. I, I love where we live. I love the people here. I love how excited they get when they find out what we're doing. Uh, I, and I, and I know that when people are coming here to help and to hope from the mainland, it creates a sense of hope, just like Zane said it creates a sense of hope in them when they're like, cause you drive everywhere and see the, and you can see the graffiti, graffiti gringos go home, you know, all that sort of stuff. But, but when they actually start to meet people who actually care, who actually want to make a difference, who aren't just coming here to check a box, but are coming here because they truly want to help and invest, 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 not just come for their little mission trip and then go home like this. I, I don't like that stuff. I, I love people that want to come and join into a vision and, and to see real change. And I know that change is going to happen. I know blessing is going to happen in this city. I know it. I, I don't have a doubt. I, I, I do not. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm thankful and I'm thankful, hey. thankful hey. for you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Lisa. Sorry. You there? Yeah, oh. sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think, I think, I, I think. All right. So does anyone have any other questions? Uh, uh, does anyone else like have anything they'd like to share? Um, One last thing. Oh, hey, Leah. 
Yeah, it's Megan. Um, so my mom is a English e e university professor over there really? in, in Puerto Rico. Yes, she teaches English as a second language um, to students. And, um, and well, this is just an idea. It, it just it just kind of came to me, you know, as you were talking. If you do manage to get, um, I believe Philip was his name, the one that spoke earlier, you know, something more short, more yes. digestible to share. I, I can share that with my mom and, and she can share it with all of her colleagues because she works for two universities and she is running an English department in one of them. Wow. Um, I can't tell you the name of the name of the okay. schools because I because guys I can't remember right now because she just started. Um um one that that was it um it, i don't know exactly how uh how to get in like, contact with you or or anything like that but i do know my whole entire family lives in puerto rico i'm the only one that's here you know in the u.s so mm -hmm. I, i i do have a lot of people that are willing to help that are and and more importantly that can uh share the message and then hopefully you know uh help, help you you know closer to your goal uh so that's the last thing that i wanted to share uh and, you know maybe at the end just get my contact information and then sure. uh you know you know i can share that with my mom and then she can share it and also my mom is more than willing more than willing uh to see whatever she can if she can bring the institutions over with your o o organization we yes. can we can try to make that happen Absolutely, Leo. Yes, uh, the best uh, the best way to um, um, to email me, uh, messaging me through uh, TikTok's kind of kind of worthless. I'll be honest with you; it's it's so hard for me to to even keep up. I I get over a hundred messages a day. That's not counting the comments, which number into the the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Uh, the best way to get in touch with me. Uh, is revealed ministries inc at gmail.com. Uh, that is that's pretty much what I run everything. You can also you can also email awake to dream inc at gmail.com. Uh, but I kind of use revealed ministries inc as my catch all. Um, but that but that I kind of filter all of my social media emails into there, uh, and it makes it easier because when someone reaches out to you via email, it's 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 a little bit it's a little bit different than, you know, like uh, a message on TikTok so, or on, on uh, uh, Facebook or whatnot. So, um, so definitely uh, email me revealed ministries, INC at gmail.com. Um, and I will have a short PDF, one page business proposal to you. Uh, and I'm working on putting everything into the database within, within the next 48 hours, I would say. I, that's very, that's doable. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You said it's re Reveal Ministries, inc.com? Inc. Mm -hmm. Okay. At, at gmail.com. Okay. Gmail awesome. And, and one last thing. Um, yes. You, you've been saying thank you a lot to us here. <laughs> I, I'm i the one that's going to be saying thank you. Thank you. Like, gracias. Really. Yeah. I've yeah. never seen. I. <laughs> okay. I feel like Jonah. I never wanted to go back to Puerto Rico. I've been fighting it. Um, just because I the, the bad experiences that I had, uh, mm -hmm. and I've also lived very, very comfortably where I'm at right now in my life. Uh, so I just wanted to say, you know, don't be discouraged. Just continue what you're doing, and thank you. Thank you, really, bro. Thank, thank you. Man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank and you so Leo, much. I just want to touch on that, Ken. I, you know, I met Ken through TikTok, Ken and Jen, and uh. I was at a very, very dark place. I was actually almost dead. They put me, they were putting me on hospice. My body was giving out. And the Lord used that opportunity to put this guy's face in my face <laughs> and turn my vision of what I saw God to be into a relationship and a a, a new space that I didn't want to let anybody into. I finally was able to. And the the benefits that have come from the teachings and the and the encouraging words and the and the things that he in, in, imparts to everyone he gives of himself one hundred percent and so does Jen like they they are the real deal they don't take a paycheck they don't 
I mean, they they are the real, and, and I said when I met them, because, you know, anybody can be anybody on TikTok. Anybody can look great on the <laughs> internet. But I came here, and I came here with very little warning and very little notice. The Lord sent me here. And when I met them, I wanted to know for real. And I'll tell you, you can know somebody by their children. You can't hide little people. They're not going to, they're not going to pretend to be something in a, in a quick notice when they're, when they're, when somebody shows up unexpected, you can't coach kids to not be these kids yeah. live, eat, breathe, love, generate joy. They encourage us. They are the most giving human beings. I have ever little, little people that have such incredible, incredible, Incredible. Oh, the I'm going to start balling too. The truth of time and the consistency of character has been shown by this incredible family and their outpouring and it's genuine and real. We know it to be true. It so is much so we moved here. <laughs> we dropped everything. We didn't have any intent to come to Puerto Rico either. My husband's <laughs> businesses are doing great. I wanted to go spend money before I got sick. I wanted to go play and we kept buying houses. And then you know what happened after I I'm got in the out same, that? Yeah, I'm in the same Stuff, stuff doesn't thing. matter anymore. We sold, yes, yeah, so we sold homes. We're here, and we're going to be in the service of people. We're That's just it. Done. We, we're done. Stuff is stuff. Stuff is stuff. Hearts we want to put our hearts where our mouths are, and we want to, you know, we want to be the change. I, I saw something recently about the, you know, those movies. You go back in time and don't make one little change because that'll change the future. Guess what? We can do that now. Now. We can be the change right yep. now. Yep. We can do one little thing and outcome is exponential. The butterfly effect is amazing. 100%. And we have that ability. And that's doing why we're doing that now. now. And it's not a matter of when can I, it's now. Yep. Get get it on, be part of it. Be part of what you need to do. Oh, I'm done 100%. too. <laughs> and uh yeah, I this this is just the start, guys. This is we're we're we haven't even hit lift off yet. You know what I mean? We're 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 all just we're all just getting into the shuttle, you know. And uh, this is the, when when that land is purchased. And like I said, we've got to move quick because he has other offers, and he's got to go. Um, he is he's got a sick mother. Uh, the the current owner has a sick mother in Canada. That's where he's from. Uh, he's French Canadian. Uh, and uh, he, another thing that's unique about this land, and I'll throw this out there um, purchasing land in Puerto Rico, anybody from Puerto Rico can, can attest. Purchasing land in Puerto Rico is not like purchasing land in the United States, it's a very uh, tricky proposition. Uh, the way the civil laws are structured, um, you can, it, the process of buying a house or a home can take a number of months. And then at the last second, uh, because the way that they do titles here, uh, everything falls apart. Um, we don't have that with this property. Uh, this property is very unique in this regard uh, because the current owner has the title history of this property going back to the 1800s, I think it is. Uh, and he is the sole owner and he is, since he is not from here, you don't have to worry about uh, a family member from down the line saying, Hey, I want this property. So him offering this property to us at the price that he's offered it, uh, is just, is just mind blowing. Um, but he, he does have to go. His mother is very sick. Uh, and he, and he, and he needs to leave. So we've got to move on this. And he's all, like I said, he's offering this, this property to us. Your audio may have dropped out, Ken. Not sure why. Yeah, audio's off. Yeah, your Bluetooth uh, mic may have ran out of juice. <laughs> One moment, please. <laughs> One moment, though. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Just I might sound a little bit tinny. Um, sorry. Uh, so, um, basically, what I was saying is the uh, the 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 owner he needs to go. And as much as he believes in what we're wanting to do, um, 
you know, we, we, we've got to get a, we've got to get a move on and we needed to get a move on, on this project on, on this weeks ago. Uh, he wanted to be gone by the end of March. So, so the screws are being put to us. Uh, if this is the property and I believe it is, this matches the property of my vision. If, if I was to show you, if I was to go through my journal and I was to show you the map of this property that I drew years ago, and you saw the map of the property from an aerial view, which I posted them in the slides, unfortunately, it probably didn't show up very well. You would be stunned at the mirror imaging of what I drew years ago into what this property looks like. This is the property. And I told him, I was like, look, this is the deal. If I don't buy it from you, I'm buying it from the person that that's going to buy it from you. So I'd rather it be from you. <laughs> so, uh, so he believes in what we're doing. He knows that he has created the infrastructure. He has created the bones of, of what it is that, that, that we are being called to do. And it's very exciting. It's very exciting because I know, I know that we're going to get it. I don't know how it's not up to me to find out. It's just me to say up to us to say, yes, and step into it. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Does anyone else have anything that they would like to share? All right. So this is the deal. If you need, shoot me an email, shoot me a message. Um, I'm at your disposal. I will get everything up for you in the next, uh, give me, I'm going to say 24 hours, give me 48. Um, to get that one page proposal to you that succinctly says what we're doing. Uh, and it will have a link on there, which will take you to a database with, with figures, pictures, graphs, all different types of stuff. I'm just gonna drop everything in. Uh, 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 basically just go to a web page and you'll be able to access it. Um, I'll just get it all loaded up um, and we'll go from there. And that'll give you all the information that you need. Um, and always, always, always guys, I'm, I'm, just, a, I'm just a message away. Um, shoot me an email. Uh, that's usually the best. Anything else? Ken, can I pray for you? Ye always. Yes. <laughs> well, right now is what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Knock it out, man. Father, I thank you for Ken. Thank you for the ministry that he's been to me, to my, uh, in my life, uh, just remotely without him even knowing my name until today, Lord. Uh, thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for this vision that you've placed on your heart and we commit it on his heart and we commit it to you, Lord. We, we have a faith and know that uh, you're going to provide what, what you have asked us to do, you've equipped us to do. And I thank you for everything that he's doing. Thank you for this uh, small group of people on the Zoom um, who just your spirit is moving in our hearts and we each have our own story. I, I would love to sit around a campfire someday and just hear more about how we're all kind of being drawn into this project, into this work that you're doing. Uh, but Lord, until then, I pray that you would help us in faith uh, meet this need that we would uh, find within our resources to give, whether that's of money or of time or of connection or of whatever it is uh, to accomplish this goal. I thank you that we're not building up a kingdom of man, but we're working to build up your kingdom here on earth, Lord. Yeah. Uh, give you the praise for all of these things. Uh, so thankful for you, Lord. Thank you for saving. Thank you for being the better Adam. Thank you for being uh, the, such such an amazing God that you would choose to partner with us, uh, that we get to be about our Father's business. Um, mm -hmm. Give you the praise for these things. Amen. Amen. And you know what? I'm saying that's going to happen. I'm going to, I'm saying right now that everyone that's on this call one day, maybe sooner rather than later, we're going to be sitting around a campfire in a fire pit at that property. That's about six miles away from us right here. And I can, and I'm going to say that we're all going to be there. We're all going to be sitting around and say, you remember when, you remember when we sat around a Zoom call and now we're all here in person seeing this manifest reality and releasing the love 
of Jesus to the land, to the people, calling out the song that was placed here when creation began and restoring hearts and minds and souls and spirits to their rightful place as manifest children of God. So guys, thank you so much. You're wonderful. Um, I'm going to redo this presentation aspect at least and record it. Um, and then I'll, what I'll do is add this on to the end of it. So it looks a lot more. <laughs> we won't have a 25 minute interruption in the middle of losing power and all the glitchy. Um, but guys, thank you. You're amazing. Um, I honor you. Um, and uh, I can't wait till to see your faces very, very soon. So God bless. And uh, we'll chat soon. Thank you.